Good morning everyone, alright today we've got a Audi TT, beautiful little car, this is a 2000 year model. Now some of you might recognise this car from, uh, I'm going to say about, say six months ago. Um, we programmed an engine ECU to this car, diagnosed it, it got kicked around a couple of shops etc. But the car's back, um, it's actually back now because the ABS light was on. So as you can see we have gotten rid of the ABS light, we've got a warning on the dash still but we've got no ABS fault set. Um, and I'll show you what we found with this. So what we found initially, I'm just completing a final fault report, um, is that we had one ABS fault that was relevant, which is this one, 01279, longitudinal acceleration sensor. I think I butchered that. Um, and it's an electrical area in the circuit, so it means that that circuit is dropping out. Now, two things we normally find with these faults. Um, on the older VAG stuff, ABS modules need to be reconditioned, which we can do in-house if it needs it. Uh, I've also seen issues with these sensors. Um, I've never tried to pull one apart and repair it before, but the sensors do have internal faults. Um, now, I'll show you what we've got. As you can see, our ABS module is back with zero faults, so we're all sorted. I just went for a 20 minute test drive. We've got other codes in other modules, but we're not worried about any of that at the minute. Um, what we found with this sensor is we found damaged solder joints internal to the sensor. So I'll turn the car off now. We've got a torch. If you're wondering why the glove box is dangling like that, it's because the actuator's busted on that door, so I couldn't actually get that door open to get into this sensor. We had to sort of wiggle our way in here. Now, if you can see there, I've got that sensor just sitting up there. That's your longitudinal acceleration sensor on these, um, and there's a lateral sensor on the other side of the vehicle. So if I get my hand up here and just wiggle this out, I'll show you what we did. So, if I get that like that, get a torch. Always makes it harder when you can't get somewhere you know the door's busted so we can't get in the door now as you can see in there what we've done or what I've done is I've actually taken all the silicon out of that sensor so I've taken all the silicon out of this casing there I've resoldered the whole sense internally there's a little chip a bunch of resistors capacitor etc um, so I've resoldered every connection in there I put it up there recalibrated it and it's been good as gold so that is a sensor fixed all I've got to do now is seal that back up so we're going to refill that with silicon, um, and that is going to save the customer buying a new sensor. So that's just a quick one on these sensors. They can be repaired um, if you've got an issue with them. Very, very gently, you have to take those apart and scrape those sensors out. They're not, um, they're not very strong, and the silicon in there is hard to get out. So you've got to really gently get it apart. Um, but that is a repair, so no parts required for this one. The customer, I'm sure, will be happy with it. Doesn't have to pay for a new sensor. We can keep the old one going, hopefully for another 23 years. All right, so just to show you what the inside of these sensors look like, we've got a photo of me doing it. I've already got this car, uh, the sensor back in, but this is mid scraping off. So we clean, cut all the silicon out, um, clean out that sensor, refloat everything. There's a little chip on the bottom. We can unflow the three pins and pull this little board up. So we resoldered everything, put it all back together, refilled it with silicon, straightened all the edges out, and it's all in the car now. So happy days, job all done.